Hey, everybody. We are going to talk Lucid Motors, the one-time holy grail of the SPAC boom, if you remember, if you were an investor a few years ago. Uh, John Rosevear is here to talk with me about it because he understands the automotive industry better than anybody I know. I just like cars, so that's why I'm here to talk about it. I, I know the stock pretty well. Um, Lucid is down 94% from its all-time high. If we're being honest, it never should have gotten to that all-time high in the first place. But uh, it, it did. Um, so we're going to dive into it. Before we do, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. Get the top 10 stocks to buy right now from The Motley Fool. It's the best way to support this work we're doing on YouTube. Again, fool.com slash Frankel. So, John, as I mentioned, Lucid was at one point the holy grail of the SPAC boom. And I've said this in a different video uh, recently. One of the biggest lessons that I learned and that I think a lot of investors should learn from the SPAC boom, one is that that's not sustainable. That can't happen again. Uh, but number two is that a great product doesn't always make a great business. And we saw that in a lot of you know, EV startups. We saw that in a lot of tech companies. The example I always give is uh, 23andMe, which I bought shares of when it was taken public by SPAC. Great product, terrible business. Um, and so my biggest question in digging into the numbers, now that we're three or four years in, is is Lucid in the same boat? I mean, the stock, the company's doing well in terms of sales. Uh, just to kind of run down a few stats for people, in the second quarter, they delivered almost 2,400 vehicles, generated a little over $200 million in revenue. They're now up to 53 studios and service centers. Um, and on the surface, the numbers sound great. The company has $4.3 billion in total liquidity. It just did a $1.5 billion capital raise. It doesn't have a ton of debt, especially relative to like a GM or a Ford uh, for, compared to its, its market value. Um, but the company is wildly unprofitable. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's net margin. And I had to verify this because I saw it on, on CNBC and I had to verify this. Its net margin is greater than negative 100%. Um, at, at, the, at the moment. So, you know, where do I reconcile the two? Like on one hand, it looks like the business is doing really well and every review I've read on their product is fantastic. Um, but they're not making money and we're a few years in now. Are they on a path to make money? That is always the question with any of these EV startups. Can they get to profitability? Uh, first of all, is there a clear path to profitability or at least likely profitability? And second, do they have the cash to get there? Uh, with some of these companies, like, you know, we have also talked about Rivian. You look at Rivian and say, you know, they're launching their mass market model in 2026. They have cash to get to 2027. That math works. Okay. You know, if the mass market model is a success, as we all think it will be, then Rivian will get to profitability, right? Lucid, it's not so clear cut. Um, Lucid is in a different space. It's selling in much smaller volumes than Rivian. I mean, they're, they're doing about a fifth, maybe even less of the sales volumes right now. Um, they led with an extremely impressive luxury sedan, which you know, maybe in 2017 looked like an impressive move. You know, we're going to build the next Tesla Model S. And, and you know, CEO Peter Rawlinson was chief engineer on the Model S. So I was going to say, it's not a total a coincidence. That was, <laughs> right, that, that is the case, right? And, and in many ways, the Lucid Air uh, evolves from the thinking behind the Tesla Model S, which at the time was a landmark product. And, you know, 100 years from now in the history of autos, there will be a chapter on the Tesla Model S. It was a huge deal. Um, and I think that led a lot of the hype and the valuation and the, oh, we'll sell 50,000 of these a year, no problem, and this and that, and this and that. And then they came out and it's like, well, you really got to spend over 100 grand to get one. And that market is not very big. I mean, look at how many Mercedes S classes get sold every month. It's, you know, it's a few thousand well, or every quarter, it's a few thousand. And, you know, how many Lucid Airs get sold every quarter? Well, it's a few thousand. <laughs> you know? And meanwhile, I, you know, they, they, they spent a lot of money to develop this thing and they're not making it back yet. Uh, one thing that will help a little is that the architecture that underpins the air uh, can also support a big SUV. That SUV is called the Gravity and they're going to start, they're, they're aiming to start production before the end of this year. That will be an incremental help. I think Gravity will cannibalize a lot of air sales just because people want SUVs. Um, and the idea of a big electric SUV uh, 
that performs well that doesn't cost three hundred thousand dollars or whatever uh, should work well for them. I don't think it's going to take them to fifty thousand vehicles a year, but it might take them to you know fifteen twenty thousand vehicles a year. That won't make them profitable in and of itself. What they need is uh, midsize models, the one size down models, the fifty thousand dollar lucid, you know, the lucid three series to use the BMW term, the, the lucid model three to use the Tesla term, right? That was Tesla. The model three was the it was the vehicle that took Tesla to, to, to profitability, or at least much closer to profitability. The Y turned out to be the big hit beyond it. Um, Lucid needs a Model 3 and a Model Y. Those are coming. Um, the work is being done. I don't think we're going to see those in any volume before 2027. Um, and with that, you've got you've to ask, okay, how much cash do they have? Well, they're saying right now uh, that they have cash with the most recent influx of cash they got from Saudi Arabia's public investment fund uh, that they can get into the fourth quarter of 2025. That's not all the way to profitability. What are they going to do? Well, let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about the Saudi Public Investment Fund, or PIF, as we call it. This is a, a fund that's close to a trillion dollars. I think last I looked, it was nine hundred and twenty-five billion under management, and and this is this is the government of Saudi Arabia investing its oil profits. Uh, and and one of the mandates this fund has is to help wean the country's economy off of oil. Uh, they've invested in a whole bunch of domestic businesses, but they've also invested in in, in global businesses like Lucid. Lucid is is building a small factory in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Saudi government has promised to buy a whole bunch of Lucids over the next several years. That'll be a cash inflow. Um, Saudi Public Investment Fund has already put in. Hang on, I'm looking for the number. About seven point nine billion into Lucid. It's it's they own about sixty percent of the company. That's a substantial portion of the capital Lucid has raised since its founding. Um, it's easy to say that PIF will just keep ponying up money until Lucid gets to a standalone level of profitability. Uh, I personally think there are three potential paths for Lucid. Uh, first of all, that exactly what PIF keeps putting money in as needed, you know, a billion here and a billion there. And eventually you're talking about real money and that sort of thing. Uh, Lucid executes and sometime in 2027, 2028, they're shipping, I don't know, 60, 70, 80,000 Lucids a year. And they're at, you know, and they're breaking even, they're getting into profitability. Uh, they, they're, they've they they got the next generation versions of the air and the gravity and, or, or maybe just developed versions of the air and the gravity and they're shipping their, you know, their answers to the Model 3 and the Model Y and people are buying them and, and you know, and probably, and, and maybe they will. Lucid right now has the best battery tech in the business among mainstream, you know, people using mainstream batteries. Their software, their management system is terrific. They get more range per battery than anybody. Um, and that gives them, as they point out, a cost and profitability advantage because they can use fewer batteries to deliver 400 miles of range, uh, 500 miles of range on some of the Lucid Airs now. Um, that is another path to revenue, by the way. They have already licensed some of their battery and related tech to Aston Martin. Um, and, and the idea is because Aston Martin is so upmarket, Aston Martin will build the $300,000, uh, you know, electric vehicles. Uh, they will use Lucid technology inside those. And, and they're not going to steal business from Lucid because they're way up, way up market. They could do another deal with a manufacturer that was aiming, you know, to use this kind of technology to get an advantage at the $35,000 price point. That would give them another stream of revenue. Um, but what they really need is, is those mid-size mass market models to get scale on their own manufacturing. Economies of scale should be a concept that anybody watching this should be able to understand. Uh, you know, if you pay a billion dollars for a tool and you produce a billion dollars worth of cars with that tool, excuse me, you're breaking even. But if you produce $20 billion of cars with that tool, you're getting economies of scale. It's just, you know, the, it's the tool, the assembly line, the factory, uh, you're getting more, more product out of it and you're, you're getting more revenue and that makes you know the incremental cost of what you spend on the battery on, on the factory much smaller um you know so that's the first scenario that that saudis keep putting money in lucid gets to profitability uh the second scenario might be somebody loves that technology so much that they buy so they could do fairly cheaply right now I mean, 
you know, a, a big automaker. If Honda decided it wanted to take a huge step forward, I'm just throwing that out. I have no reason to believe Honda is looking at a deal with Lucid, but that would be a purchase. And then, you know, the third possibility is it does keep getting more money from PIF and muddles along for a while, but deadlines slip. The midsize model doesn't do as well as it expects. And finally, the Saudis pull the plug and, you know, Lucid just sort of shuts down. Um, so, so it's not a it's not a low risk investment, but drive a lucid air and it's hard not to love it. It's a superbly executed car, and I and I keep thinking that if a company has the product, if an automaker has the product, and can you know manage to create a sensible business to put the product out there, results will follow. You know, and and we have talked about companies that have had the product and have not been able to do that. Uh, Lucid has taken some big steps in the direction of, of getting a handle around their costs, which were outrageous for a while. Um, it, it just, I, I mean, everything from parts deliveries and warehousing and stuff, it, it just, they kind of threw it together on the fly and it wasn't best practices by any measure. Now they're much closer to best practices. They are doing a good job of reducing costs. Uh, they need more volume and more cost reduction to get further. Uh, they had also hoped for more pricing power. They've had to cut prices several times to sustain this level of sales. Um, and, you know, that will come as, as the brand, maybe as, as the brand gets further traction, as it seems more likely that Lucid will be around two years from now to, to service the cars. So, you know, we say, is it finally time to buy Lucid? I wouldn't do it with money you need for a down payment on a house in five years. But, you know, understanding that this, there is some risk here. This is not a slam dunk. This is not buy Ford and forget about it and collect the dividend. This is, this is a company you've got to watch. Um, you've got to pay attention to it, but, but you know, the valuation is so cheap right now that the payoff can be deep. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from the popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by nearly five times. So go to fool.com slash Frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 767% as of July 5th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 163% as of July 5th, 2024.